Hello everybody and welcome back to our last problem uh, on tests of independence. As our third problem, this time I'm going to go through it a little more quickly, a little less talk, and just to allow you to kind of get the flow so you get some idea of how to get through these problems from start to finish with fewer interruptions of me talking uh, in between. So let's jump into it. A local car dealership has reason to believe that whether a customer is married or single will influence the brand of vehicle they choose to buy. The following table contains our observed frequencies. So here we have our explanatory variable marital status and here we have our response variable. So the type of vehicle that they choose to buy is somehow dependent on whether they're married or they're single. Or we could say being married or single somehow explains or predicts the type of vehicle that they might purchase. So our null and alternative hypotheses, here we will say, uh, let's write this out longhand. Marital status and brand of vehicle, or let's say vehicle preference, are independent and the alternative hypotheses marital status and vehicle preference are not independent. Okay, so there's our null and alternative. The first step, once we've got that test laid out, is now to calculate our test statistic, which involves those expected frequencies. So I want to know these common proportions. 160 divided by 577 divided by 577. So I'm dividing everything by that total because that's what we would expect those proportions to be if the null were true. 160 divided by 577 and 247. Now we apply those probabilities to our totals. So 0 0.295 times 298. This is 8791. 0.295 times 279. 82.305. Now I'm on to the second one. 0.277 times 298, 82.546, 0.277 times 279, 77.283, 0.428, I'm on to this one now, times 298, 127,544, and 428 times 279, 119.412. So there we have all of our expected values. Now we're going to go through, calculate all of these individual components of our chi-squared test statistic. So we'll go row by row as we have done before. So 90 minus 8791, 2.09 squared 
divided by 8791. That's going to round up there. Now we're on to Honda, 69 minus, oh, no, we're not on to Honda. We're on to singles for Ford, 80 minus 82,305. squared divided by 82305 now we're on to Honda 69 minus 82546 squared and divide by 82,546. Sometimes I wonder how many people actually watch all of this or if you're fast forwarding everything. If I were you, I'd probably fast forward a lot of these calculations. 91 minus 77.283, 13,717, squared 188,156, Divide by 77283, 2.435. Now we're on to Mazda 139 minus Divided by 127,544. And our last one, 108 minus 119. Squared. Divided by 119,412. All right, and now I'm going to add all of these up. 2.435 plus 2.223065.05. That gives me my chi squared of 6.89. Eight nine three, if we want to be precise. Okay, we've got our test statistic. Which distribution are we using? Row minus one times columns minus one. I have three in the rows. I have two in the columns. Once again, two degrees of freedom. I know we've seen that a lot, but that's not the way it's always going to be. When we're doing problems by hand, yes, we keep it simple, but if you're doing this on a computer, then certainly it could be anything. So we have two degrees of freedom. We have a level of significance, alpha is 0.05. We have a chi-squared of 6.89. So here we are at our chi-squared distribution. Two degrees of freedom. Here's alpha, a familiar value. We have that chi square critical value 5991. Here's where we will reject. Here's where we will not reject. Our test statistic was 6.89. So it's between these two. And if this area here is equal to 0.05, then this area here, oh, what have I done? What a silly mistake. Here is 6.89. And here, that blue area, that p-value, definitely less than 0.05. Our test statistic is in the rejection region as defined by that critical value. 
So our p-value is less than 0.05. It was greater than 0.025. This gives us sufficient evidence to reject our null hypotheses. We do have evidence to show that marital status and vehicle preference are not independent. So there does exist some kind of relationship between those two variables. Now, if we want to have a little bit of insight as to what that relationship might be, as we did in problem 12-2a, we drew a bar chart to give us a little bit of insight as to what that relationship might be. So I'm going to clean up this table because in here I want to point, put in all of our point estimates of the various proportions. So I'm going to take here our 90 divided by 170 just so that I've got some information that we can put on our bar chart and give us a little bit of insight as to what that relationship might be between our two variables. 80 divided by 170.47. 69, now I'm comparing these against those totals, divided by 160. Oops. 69 divided by 160. So here I have a point estimate of 43. Well, the next one, of course, we know what it's going to be. 57. The next 139 divided by, so I'm looking here, and this is my denominator. So 139 divided by 247. Here I have 56 and 108 divided by 247. Here I have 44. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick little diagram, a quick little bar chart, so that I can get some idea of that relationship. So let's just clean up some space here so that I can draw my little picture. Okay, so for the Ford, let's do the Ford in blue. And again, this is not precision. This is just to provide us with some insight, some idea of what that relationship might be. So for the married individuals, the married folks, we have 53% uh, bought the Ford. So here I'm going to have, or of the Ford purchases, I should say, 53% of them were married. So here I have what that bar would look like. So there's our, our uh, Ford, that was 0.53. And for the single folks, that was 0.47. So let's draw that maybe somewhere here, it doesn't have to be to scale. And that is for the Fords. Now we'll do the same thing for the Honda. So the Honda for married was 0.43. And Honda for the single was 57. So that's way up here. And that's the Honda. Now, for the Mazda, we have 56 for married. And for single, 44. And that's for the Mazda. So here we have the red represents singles, the blue represents married. Well, I think here we can see that relationship. When we look at Fords, 
the Fords tended to be preferred a little bit more by folks who were married. But when we look at Honda and Mazda, the relationship is almost completely inverse. The Hondas are strongly preferred by singles relative to the married people. And when we look at the Mazdas, it's, it, it's perfectly opposite. For the Mazdas, married people strongly prefer Mazda um, relative to singles. So that bar chart gives us a little bit of insight into the nature of that relationship. Once we go through that full test and we find that we reject the null hypotheses, our evidence shows that marital status and vehicle preference are not independent. Well, now if we draw those in this bar chart format, we can see a little bit more about just the nature of that relationship between them. It gives us a little bit more insight. Okay, so that's the complete exercise in 16 minutes, including that bar chart to give us that insight. So hopefully that was helpful. I thank you again for watching. We will get into module 12-3 next, where we look at goodness of fit. Again, plenty of similarities, but there will be some differences coming up. And you'll see those, especially when we look at normal distribution. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.